I remember reading for that first assignment. It was the hardest thing I'd done in my life. Nothing was working for me. I just felt so useless. This problem was going round and round in my head for days. It was the Friday afternoon with less than a week before the deadline and we still hadn't had a breakthrough. Things were pretty tense in the team. Welcome to this module on improving your reading. In this module, we're going to be following the stories of two people who struggle with reading. And through their stories, we'll show you things that help with the many different kinds of reading that we have to do in everyday life. So let's begin with chapter one. My name's Aisha, I'm 32 years old and I work in human resources. It was about three years ago, I was working as an assistant in a company of about 200 people. I really liked my job. I love working with people, but I wanted a bit more of a challenge and I wanted a more senior job in the company. To get that, I knew I'd have to study for the professional qualification in human resources. So I spoke to my boss. She agreed that the company would sponsor me to do a day release course over two years. My name's Rob. I'm 52 years old and I work for a construction company. I had a pretty tough time at school and I left without any qualifications. Nobody really knew about dyslexia in those days, so if you had no qualifications, people just assumed that you were thick. I knew I wasn't stupid, but I wasn't sure what kind of job I was suited for. I got interested in architecture as a teenager. I love looking at buildings seeing how great architects manage to solve all those structural problems and still create something beautiful to look at. I think great buildings are inspiring. They cheer me up anyway. We'll be looking at many kinds of reading, from simple emails and memos through to longer and more complicated documents. We'll be introducing some really helpful principles that you can apply in your own way to suit your requirements and we'll be showing you some useful strategies that will help make your reading much more manageable. You will need to practice each new strategy you learn for it to become effective. As with any skill, the more time you spend doing it, the easier it becomes. The strategies will help you to speed up your reading, make fewer mistakes, understand more and remember more. These techniques will improve your confidence about reading and hopefully your enjoyment too. Back then I hadn't been diagnosed with dyslexia, but I knew that I had some difficulty with reading and writing. I dropped out of an evening class once before because although I really enjoyed the lectures, the reading and the, the assignments kind of scared me off. This time though, I convinced myself that things would be different. I thought, this is for my career and I'm determined to stick with it. And I meant it. I started out just working on building sites. I was always good at drawing and designing things, so I managed to get a job as a junior in the drawing office. And over a few years, I took some courses at night school and slowly but surely, I managed to get myself qualified in engineering drawing and then in structural engineering. Over the years, I moved up through the company and now I'm with the team that does the contract bids. We try and win contracts with property developers to build their buildings. They tell us what they want to build, we propose how we do it and how much it would cost. And if they like our bid best, we get the job. We're a big company with hundreds of full-time staff and thousands of contract staff. To keep all that going, we have to keep winning contracts. And this is a very competitive business. It's highly pressurised too. The budgets are in the millions and there's only ever one winner. There's no rewards for coming second. There's no silver medal. My dyslexia was diagnosed quite late in life. I was in my 40s. My reading's not strong. I don't read novels for pleasure like some people. But I do read trade journals, textbooks, stuff on the internet about things that interest me. I can manage emails and light reading. But for longer documents, more complicated ones, I can easily get stuck. Different kinds of reading require different approaches. Some of the reading we do at work or in our spare time is not very demanding. 
You may find that reading simple emails or memos about everyday aspects of your job is easy enough for you to manage. But what if the content is more complicated? Or if you're getting tired? And what if accuracy is critical? The techniques we are about to introduce are useful for all kinds of reading. We will find them particularly helpful for dealing with reading that's a bit more challenging. So despite the difficulties I had in the past, I started this course with a spirit of optimism. A couple of weeks in, we received a set of questions for the first assignment and a reading list. I chose a question about recruitment. So I got my books from the library and bravely sat down to read. <laughs> and very quickly, I started feeling worried. I couldn't seem to take in what the words were saying. I remember sitting at my desk for the whole weekend going over the same chapters again and again. But I just wasn't getting it. I was feeling exhausted and I was really starting to panic. We see clients every day who've had very similar experiences to Aisha. Those feelings of frustration and anxiety are very common. She's trying to read complicated information under pressure and she's getting overloaded. This might sound familiar to you. At this point, Aisha hasn't had a diagnosis of dyslexia and she hasn't had any support, so she doesn't yet have the tools that would help her cope. Over the course of this module and the rest of the training, we hope to give you those tools that will help you to manage better at work and in education. That concludes chapter one. See you in the next chapter where we'll start looking at the strategies in detail.